Hey everybody, uh, Kabayun here, and this video is going to be on um, doing your Psytrance bass. So, let's jump right into it. The first thing I've done here is I've just opened a um, blank project in Cubase um, that uh, is my folders. So I have my, as you guys saw before, I have nothing in these folders, but I just always start up with my template. Uh, it's the way I like to work. So I've got my kick channel here, and we have, um, it's just, it's, it's a sample of one that I've made. So I'm um, just going to use this, and we'll do kick in another tutorial. Um, so what I've first done is I've put the kick here. I've, I've made a group channel. Uh, this is a folder, but I also have my group track here with the kick and bass. Um, this will be important later, but... Um, the first thing is just also I'll route that to the kick bass bus. I've created a bass channel and I've also routed this to the kick and bass bus. Um, and so for the kick, right now I have it completely clean, no EQs, no um, um, anything, no compression, nothing like that. And so the, what I've done here is I like, some people like their kicks longer, some people like them shorter. I like my kicks to be just about a 16th note, which is right here. It's going to go a little bit over into the um, next uh, beat, but, uh, or where the, so where the first bass line, the first note of the bass line would be. And so we're going to uh, have that fade out. And then we're going to use either um, a little bit of modulation on the bass to um, take care of that overlap. So you can hear the kick. Nothing special. Um, and the first thing that I do is I just set my volume to be of the kick this, uh, to be negative 10 decibels. Just a good starting point. Um, if you do put your bass, your kick here, and I usually put my bass, depending on it, around negative 12 decibels, so a little bit quieter than the bass, I mean, than the kick. And that just gives you a good place because if you then add all your sounds and everything like that, you won't have to uh, lower the volume when you finish um, the track at the end. And here, let me just slow it down. Let's just do 148 BPM. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here, so we get onto our bass, is just make a MIDI, um, MIDI window. And we're going to... choose what note we want. So let's do something. I'm going to just do G. All right. So the first thing is I'm just going to be putting my MIDI notes here. Um, and so what I want to do is I like, I just make them 16th notes. And then as a starting point, what I do is I'll go up to the smallest, uh, division here and make them a little bit shorter. So they're long, um, as possible, but they don't go all the way to the next note. That way you can, uh, use the release to have a little bit of time in between there to shape the end of the note. Okay. So we've got a MIDI pattern. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I, I have um, a bass set up, but I'm just going to start from scratch here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to show you guys how uh, uh, basic the... Um, let's see, where is Silent One? Okay, the basic way that you make a bass on any synthesizer. And I'm going to use... Uh, nope. We're going to use Silent because it's just super easy. So... If I'm here and we just need to get to first um, the go to four, choose an initial patch, no preset. Okay, so we just have our initial patch here, and we are, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to use one oscillator, so this one here, we have it on saw, which is all we need. Um, now we can pitch it 
the octave down here maybe to get it more where we want. And so then the, the basically we just need a filter here at a uh, low pass. And so a bass in Psytrance is just applying a modulation envelope to the filter. So if we put this here, and so we choose filter, cut off A, go all the way up, pull the sustain down, and then we pull the cutoff frequency down here. We don't need any resonance. So now you'll hear as we move the decay time up, you start to get the bass to come through. And so this is just the filter and envelope going on that cut cutoff. So the first thing you want to do is start here, put this up, and then find where you want that. You can hear that. Da -da 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 And you want to get that around where you want it. You can add a little bit of sustain so that the note holds after and the tiniest bit of release as well. And then what you want to do is it's a combination of playing with this, the decay time, and the cutoff frequency. So if you want it more open, higher. If you want it closed, lower. Usually you want it very near to the bottom. Okay, so basically mod envelope affecting the cutoff of one filter. That is the basic, basic way that you will create a bass in anything, whether you're going to use Silent, whether you're going to use Serum, whether you're going to use Dune, which is another one, which is really great. It's basically just this one thing, modulating or uh, tweaking the mod, uh, the filter envelope. So that's it. Um, but now I'm going to go to show you guys, because what I really want to focus here on is not just this part, because this is, you know, uh, just the beginning step. The next step is how you shape that using EQ, using um, uh, especially the most important one for a side trans bass is going to be multiband saturate or distortions. Um, so we'll show you that. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to go back from silent. I'm going to open up uh, Trillion, which... Uh, you have to, it's, it's, it's a bit of an expensive thing, but it's really great um, for making bass because it has samples from um, lots of legendary um, synthesizers and other sources. So you really have a lot, of, and, and then you can control it the same way that I just showed you. So basically here on my main one, I've got the ARP 2600 Sawtooth. And here is our filter envelope down here. And we just turn the filter on put the cutoff down see here we go i've this one it's on power filter 24 there's a bunch of different ones here in the low pass you could try all the different kinds of ones so then again the it's doesn't matter what synth you're using it's this so you just got to dial it in to where want it okay and then I'm just gonna go over and just quickly check the level it's a little loud I uh, know it's perfect see it's about negative 12 right there that is where we like it so to start, this is okay. Oh, uh, one thing I'm gonna do is just reduce this. We only need one voice. We want mono. And you don't ever want any resonance on this filter. You just, so usually what you're gonna want it all the way down and then you just play with this. And you see right when you get onto the line of where you want it, it'll start to feel like it lags or a little bit because that's it the decay taking longer than the division of the time so if you want that ba -da 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 -ba -da -da -ba -da -da -da, listen for it somewhere right around here 
Okay, so now we're gonna go and I'm gonna walk you through one by one some different um, options for what we wanna do, which is putting on some multiband distortion. So Cubase has this great one called Quadrafuzz. If anybody uh, is familiar, if you know about forest music and things like this, you'll know that um, Quadrafuzz, the original version, which you can't use anymore um, on newer versions of Cubase, was legendary for the bass. You just basically drop it on and it sounds amazing. Um, and especially for uh, the other Steinberg ba uh, VB1. So you put VB1 with the original Quadrafuzz and there it is. Now things have come a long way and so uh, we can do a lot more than just that, but still this second version of Quadrafuzz is very nice. So basically what I'm, I have, it's, it's a multi-band, so we got four different bands here and um, I have it on the tape selection here. And so if we just turn it on, off, on, off, on, and you hear, so this is giving us a nice, and we can, you can hear the distortion, the drive, certain channels more, but you really don't need a lot. We just want real subtle. Again, AB, off, on. Now what you can do here is you can play around with these frequencies and move these cutoffs. And you hear how it's gonna do a lot to change the sound. What I try to do is put them in between, not on top of a peak. And I'll show you a little bit in the next, um, in Saturn, how to do it even more specifically. So, for example, this is Quadrifuzz. Now, for people who don't use Cubase, we have FabFilter Saturn. As you can see, it's a similar, similar thing we're going on here. I am gonna use, what I like to do is actually use both of them and have a mix. So I have the tape on Quadrifuzz, and then over here, I'm gonna use Tube. And so basically, let's turn this on. You hear what that's doing as well. And so now I have the uh, Quadrifuzz muted, so we're just gonna do one. And then, this is a great way as well, you can use these to adjust the levels of the bands. So that's, you can hear, if we have it even, zero, 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 a lot of times you have a little too much bass, and we'll look at a spectrum analyzer afterwards to see this. But so you can use this to pull out and uh, mix the frequencies in a way that's a little different than using a parametric EQ or a high pass filter. So, here, I have no drive on the top one, no drive on the lower, just drive here on the middle. And now what I like to do with Saturn is get this. Just look online for note frequency charts. Basically, uh, this is a super handy thing to have, which just shows the actual frequency for different notes. Um, the frequencies of every octave. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to, since uh, my bass line is in G, I want to put this crossover and this crossover in between the octaves. So G, it's going to be a 49, 98. So let's see here, we're just going to be using the 98. So it's right around there already. We can type it in if we want. And then the next one, this one is in the 7, 800 range. So we're going to, uh, we're going to put it onto, um, let's see, this one, 783. This is the right octave, the fifth octave. So let's go around. 783. All right. Now, let's try them together. Nice. Very nice. And then again, you can play with the relative levels here on both of them. This is going to be the mix amount here. So you see we can pull out the bass. If we think there's too much low end, we can remove it with either one of these guys. And we can move these around as well. 
if we want to try different crossovers. Now it's usually better if you leave the first ones and then go into the next range. And then this is 1.8, so let's take a look back at our chart, what's around G for 1.8, so that's 1567. So let's move this guy down a little bit. There we go. All right, so tape and tube, only really adding any drive to the middle on this one and using the band levels to pull the bass down just a little bit so we don't have too much low end. Next, I'm going to show you um, a free plugin called the 1973 Stillwell EQ. Um, there are many like this. This is just an example of one, which basically, um, what I want to do here, sorry, I should be showing you guys this whole time. Let's get uh, the Pro Q3 open. So, first of all, let's go ahead and that's my default, as we talked about in the other videos. Okay, so let's look if we have off and then we turn them on. Now you can see from the shape here that it's looking pretty good. We've got a, lot, a little bit extra here that is kind of humping up that we don't need. You see how we can move things here. Okay, so now we're gonna use, go back to the 1973. So what I was saying about this one is what we want is we want a lot of times to have a dip around here in the, uh, between 200 and 400, or depending on the baseline, but you really want it on the uh, like third to fifth harmonics here. So if we hold on top of this, you can see. So we're gonna want to dip out these guys a little bit. And that's what I have here. So I have this, it's just set to nothing. This is a high shelf, which is down a little bit, but the main thing I'm using here is a um, EQ at 360. So if we see that's gonna be right about here and see we have this little, it's gonna pull this range down. And the difference between doing it with the parametric, like I could just put it like this, but this is going to impact the frequencies over here and over here. Some of these nice old emulation so, um, plugins emulate um, hardware that it's a bit more subtle and it, it's, it's obviously not as clean, but the way that it does it, it, it'll pull out some of the frequencies in a way that adds character and um, doesn't distort it and add artifacts. So we're gonna do that. And basically what I'm doing here is as you can see, pulling out a little bit on the top, above 12, and then here. Now look at that, you see here? And so now depending on the type of baseline, you might want a lot of this or not much. But for sure you can see when it's flat and it looks like a hill here, it's too much mid-range. Now if I just go, see how we're getting this little dip here and then it goes back up? This is what we're looking for. And then again, if you want more, some like dark baselines, really take it out even more. I'm gonna go about here. Okay. Um, let's just move this up. Okay, now, while we're here with the, looking at this, what we wanna do, if you're gonna be using any EQ, parametric EQ, you wanna put it into natural, I'm uh, sorry, linear phase. Zero latency is the normal way it's gonna uh, distort um, and, 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 for example, if you put a high pass, it's gonna create a big uh, resonant peak at the high pass frequency. So if we put this to something sharper, just to give it so you can tell, if we were on zero, you can hear that? You see how it's actually boosting this right here. We don't want that. We wanna cut, but without boosting anything, we don't wanna create a resonant peak. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put this onto linear phase. And now you can hear it. All I'm really doing is, as you can see, pulling this here. Also, I don't need, I don't want to affect this too much, so I'm going to move this down underneath where, I mean, but somewhere between 27 to 32 hertz is usually where I do it. No resonance, linear phase. So you don't even hear that, which is what you want. We just want to get a little bit of this low stuff out of there. And again, remember, if we want to remove the low, we can pull out using our bands here. Um, now, somebody asked this in the um, on the comments about from the last video. You'll see some people will go into the kick and they will, or and the bass, and they will do you know loads of little points like this to try to make you know where you're removing the overlap. You look at one at the kick and you and you make these put these in the kick you put them just to fit them like puzzle pieces together personally i don't like to do this because i think that you're really adding um you're changing it too much the thing is if you look at a base and you can see it right here i'm going to just delete all these points these each the, the sound is very distinct each peak is distinct from each other and so if you start messing with these things you're going to mess with harmonics you're going to change the way that it it, it um it sounds and so again doing it obviously with these guys is going to do it as well doing it with the um uh distortion units but it's going to do it in a way where it's going to affect all of the frequencies rather than specific frequencies so we're going to get a much more natural and warm sound and in general my ethos is less is more especially when dealing with the bass. So, um, this is the basic thing that I do there. I have one other little secret sauce thing that I will use, which is this is the UAD Voice of God by Little Labs, which if many of people might have used, um, let's say, uh, R-Bass, Max Bass, these things from Waves. But these things will make it muddy. And a lot of times people are trying to fatten up your bass, but you don't actually want to fatten up your bass too much. Um, you want it to be nice and quote unquote fat, but not fat in your studio, fat on the PA system. And your studio, you're going to be using near field monitors um, that don't have a subwoofer. Even if you do have a subwoofer, you know, it's supposed to be a much flatter response when you're in a studio listening. When you're out at a, um, in a car even, or at your friend's house, or out of a PA system, they're gonna have tons of bass. So if you boosted your bass too much and there's any amount of mud, it's just gonna it's just gonna be the whole thing will be mud. So it's better to have a nice, tight, clean bass that maybe sounds not pumping enough on small systems because on a big system it's gonna be there. Whereas if you have too much bass, so that it sounds good out of your you know, a uh, laptop or in your if it sounds say perfect on your studio monitors, it's going to have way too much bass um, when you're actually out in a PA system. So don't get caught this this whole you know I need the bass to be more fat, more fat. Eh, it's, I don't know how we got to this place because actually you know cleaner is better than fatter. What and again also it depends on the type of music. Like Asterix is going to get a way fatter bass than uh, me because he's working 10, 15 BPM slower. So there's more time for the bass um, to develop, to, 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 it, it has more space and so it can be louder and have more present because there will be little more cycles that, of the, that can complete. Um, and so for you know faster music, 150 BPM and higher, we're getting into this really uh, short time frame where each note doesn't have a lot of time. And so there's going to be an upper limit to how much bass you can get and still have it be clean. Um, so uh, don't try to get too much, too much mud. So I'm going to show you this little plugin, and um, this is something that basically I use it at like five percent. So I'll show you. Do you hear anything? Barely, right? That's what we want. Now I'm going to turn the amplitude on this thing all the way up, just so you can hear. 
and I don't know if you can see, but it's really warming it up. And then we can move the frequency. So you see I'm making a huge bump here. And if I move it, that's moving up, right? So I'm gonna find the frequency I wanna boost. And see now this is down here. And this is up here. So I wanna kinda give just a little bit under, you know, to boost this area. And then I'm just gonna put the amplitude down to literally one out of 10. So you barely hear it, just to give a little bit of a boost. So for people who don't have that plugin, don't worry about it. It's the least important thing that I've done. So now one other thing we're gonna do, when I went into my, um, I started it and I just made my notes here all have the same velocity. But, oh, so here's the key thing. Now we're gonna test and see how this is actually looking. We also can look, let's get a Smex, Smexoscope, okay. Oh, sorry. Smexoscope, we gotta put it onto the kick base. So now this is why we put the kick and bass together. So, oh, that, we have the kick bass bus here. Okay, so we have our kick and our bass coming in. Very nice. Let's get a little bigger. And... So um, we are watching this and it's looking pretty good. Our kick is still there. So we've routed the kick to kick and bass bus. We've routed the bass to the kick and bass bus. Now here's the first check that we're gonna do. So if we have the kick is playing, if we solo it, it is coming in here at 10. And if we go up to our kick and bass bus, we should be seeing the same number. Now, let's unmute the bass. Sometimes, if your bass is overlapping in a bad way with your kick, like, like let's say if we take oops, this kick, make the kick all the way longer and now go back up to the kick and bass and actually I want to just turn this up a little bit okay so yeah, you're getting a little bit, but we're basically, we have, the kick is short. The point, I'm, I'm not getting the overlap that I wanted to show you, but basically the point is that you don't want the two things to sum to more than the individual parts. So if I mute the bass and I mute the kick individually, and then we check their volume, they shouldn't, oh, you see, that's doing something. So we do have a little bit of this changing here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the base and gonna put on a little bit of a side chain. This is just gonna make the first note have a little bit less volume. The other way you could do this is by also, you could put the volume down, I mean the velocity down on the first note. but this is gonna then change the feel more. And just so you guys, if talk about something different, for doing certain patterns and stuff, 
you want to, you can play with these. Like for example, if we want to sound the Parvati feel, and if you do it even more, if we grab the first and the last. So now we're getting this one. Ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, well, let's just go back to basically normal. So you could do it two ways. You could do it just with the velocity, or the way that I like to do it is a little bit of both. So I'm put the velocity down, and then we'll also put on the LFO tool. Now, I will say, I'm doing this on my headphones, which is not how I usually mix my kick and bass, um, just because I'm making the video. Um, so hopefully it also sounds super killer up there, but I'm showing you guys my like tried and true technique, so I'm pretty comfortable that it also sounds good. Um, and so to go back over one last thing here. So I have my fab filter here, but you know, to be honest, actually don't, do you hear a big difference? You're getting a little bit out here, but it's total. It's not completely necessary. And sometimes it's nice to not have the low pass and just to use, even with the linear phase, but just to leave well, no EQ. I have, well, I have the 1973 on here doing a little bit. But it's very clean and it's mostly coming through now if I just gonna mute, if I turn off the quadrifuzz and fab filter. There, what, what happened to the bass? You know what I mean? This bass sounds garbage now. And so for me, the way that I do it is using these combinations. And so if you didn't have quadrifuzz, you could use two Saturns. Have one Saturn with say three bands like this on tube and do another Saturn with uh, different bands on tape. And then also you can see here that you can adjust the individual frequencies for the different bands. So I've put a little bit up and then coming down here, you could just you could play with these all different ways. So you can actually EQ each different band um, individually. Just one last thing I didn't really mention. Um, but yeah, so if you've actually seen, I, I don't know if anybody watched, uh, Brainiac uh, has uh, some master class. And when he's doing it, he does this as well. It's, um, he has multiple multiband distortions. And so I think he uses two or three Saturns to do it. So, um, you know, it really helps to shape it. So let's turn this back on and see what happens. A little better, way better. Okay, so we've gotten, and so, the, then the reason I actually want to show you, so I've turned off the high pass here. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to go into the kick and bass channel here, and I have a fab filter that I've put on the kick and bass. Because if any of people have ever done, oh God, no, don't quit. All right, guys, I think I'm just going to bail here. The, the, it's, uh, it's going to quit. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, um, Ah, forget it. Just bear with me for one second, guys. I don't think I saved super close to that, but anyways, it's we'll do it again. So uh, this is a good moment to remind everybody... Uh, save all the freaking time because yeah i just i didn't i don't think i saved that for a while um let's see tutorials base tutorial newer so we have newer backup let's just do that see what it saved a little more recently Okay, so while we're waiting for this, basically what I was going to say is just that I put a um, 
a uh, Pro-Q 3 with the linear phase to use as my filter, basically. So if you want a high-pass filter, low-pass filter, and do sweeps on your kick and bass. So, all right, let's just go. Should have everything set up decently. Close enough. Close enough to just keep going on and show you guys what I was, the next things. So, if we go back up to the kick and bass, and we see we have a fab filter here. So this one, I've set up as linear phase. And so I'll use this if I want to do, like if you want to do a high uh, sweep, right? Because if you use a filter or something like that, you're going to get the same issue you get, as I showed you before, you're going to get resonant peaks at that frequency. So if you want to just move it out and have it clean and not distorted at all, just do it like this. Use a high pass and a low pass, linear phase. And if you just leave it, see if they're above and below, that doesn't make a difference. And you just leave that on. And then I automate these with automation channels here. Not, I have to turn it on. Anyways, so do that. Now we're going to have to, I'm going to show you the thing that you want to do at the very end. So some people talked about, um, multi-sampling and putting your kick, you know, doing every single note. For example, I've only been on one note here. So let's go ahead and let's just say, what if we do the octave thing, you know? Do, do, do. Okay. So usually what I do in this, you, you, the envelopes are going to be a different sh size. So you can, um, the higher frequency is going to be a different volume. Everything's going to be different. Usually, if I'm doing around within a few notes, it's not that big of a difference. And mostly you'll find that if... Um, I, I personally like to work with synthesizers rather than um, samples because then if you want a long, if you can just, you have more f uh, flexibility. But I will clean them up at the end, which I'll show you. However, it depends on what you want to use. Certain uh, synths, they're not totally, they make a great, they have great waveform, they sound good, but they're not stable. So in that case, you might want to sample out one waveform or one, one cycle, one note, and then, uh, or just a long note holding it. Like that, and put that into a sampler and do it. And you can multi sample out every notes. And you know, this is great. The thing is, is it's a lot of work for every single track. And you know, to be honest, that it, it's not totally necessary. It depends. If your bass is all over the place, well, you're gonna have to fix that. But there are many ways to do it. Usually, what I'll do is I will separate my bass into two different channels. So, say I just have this, we're gonna go with the octave one right here, right? What I will do is duplicate and in one take out the high notes and the other or take out the low notes take out the high notes so now we have bass high and we can see then we can just we have a whole other channel for this so if we want we can move these see now we're not totally in the middle of the phrase here oops thing is we're going to see that the volume is too high so you can see the high note is oh i think uh, the bass is louder also i didn't let's see so kick is at negative 10 let's get this guy down like negative 3.5 and let's see how that sounds and so then the thing is we can go in and we can tweak this one different so actually the main place that it's going to matter is the uh, length of the decay so we go in here to our filter envelope so now we're just affecting the middle note, right? So 
we can affect the length of this independently from the length of the other ones. And so then also, you know, if I make my pattern, I'll sometimes, you know, it's, I'm just doing high notes and low notes here, but basically I'll set it. The top half of the octave can go to the high notes and the lower half of the octave can go to the low notes. Now, one other thing I want to show you, and um, I'm going to just, uh, let's do it on, well, actually, we can, we can put both of these together. So now what we're going to do is bass high. Both of them are going to the kick and bass. So I'm going to show you one last very important thing about dealing with your bass. So I'm going to record the uh, group of the kick and bass with no kick just because I want to get both the high and the low in the same one together. And let's go bass audio. I'm going to also convert this at this moment to MIDI. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, mono. And I'm going to put the bit depth, make sure it's 44.1, 24-bit, or whatever your sample, uh, whatever you're working in. Let's make sure that this is not going to the desktop, but it's going to the project audio folder. And let's insert it to the audio, uh, in audio track. All right, so we bounce. We have the audio down on the bottom. Now let's go ahead and mute the MIDI channels and we can see exactly what is our problem here. So when you put all of these distortions onto your bass, you're going to, first of all, there's going, you see how um, the bass sometimes when it records, if we look in here, there's a delay. It's not actually triggering or starting on the uh, first of the 16th note. So what we can do, um, we can adjust that and move it forward. Now, I will say that it does not always need to be exactly here. You'll, you got to use your ear. A lot of times I actually like a little bit of a delay because that's where it sounds right. And you're going to have to just every, every synth and uh, sound source is different. I'm going to give you a slightly different waveform. But so before we play with the front there, I just also want to show you that this is the other problem is that we see we have this big tail here. All of this is now overlapping with the kick. So now if we go and we do our kick soloed and we look out the kick bass channel, we have that. And now if we put the bass audio in, oh, I have to put it to the kick and bass. You can see that we're now higher because this is hitting where this is. Also, if we go ahead and look at a smex smexoscope, here it's a little difficult but um the point that i wanted to, that i'm trying to make is that it's actually better to show you just here on the waveform because you see the kick here is now going to overlap with this and so these are going to sum together and they're going to change it and you're going to get a little squeezing of the kick at the beginning and you don't want that you want the kick to hit 100 percent clean so we're going to do two things here the first thing is let's go ahead and just move over this um let's see I actually am not going for the, well, here, let's, let's try this. We go over to this point. And now if we put it to here, oops, see we're on bar. All right. So. That is good. I moved it forward on. 
And as I said, though, we can try. I'm going to just move to a little small. It's too late. I actually think it's even better here. See? where the timing is automatically so this is what I what I really want to show you here is not about that because you can adjust that on your own the point I want to make here is if we go to 16th is, is specifically about this tail so in Cubase is a great thing what you can do is if you switch to the scissors and then you press on a Mac it's alt um, and you ch click in one place, it's going to break it all into that many pieces. So what I want to do is break the entire thing into one beat. Then I go back to, by hitting one, I move to the cursor, go here, select. Oh, just need to go to the end because there is one little tiny, I don't know if you can see that. This stupid thing, I have to delete Okay, so then, and imagine my track is you know super long here, so I have a million of these, but I'm doing it at the very end, and so you select all events, and it grabs all of your bass, and then you just move the first one back. So you see how it's now removed this overlap, and then we can use our fades to just fade us in here, and then on the tail side, it's going to be really important. And if you want to zoom in, it can sometimes help because we want to go and get this down to a zero crossing. So I'm going to go like that, but not affect it too much. That looks good. So now when the kick hits, it's kidding clean. And if we go back to our smexoscope, you'll see it's hitting cleaner. Okay. So this is very important. At the very end, remove the tails from the bass so that the the um, the kick hits cleanly. And this is this is hugely important because otherwise your kick is going to be off. Um, so let's just quickly go over everything from the beginning. So remember that to, no matter what synth you're using, basically the key thing is a low pass filter using the decay um, to uh, modulate the amount so just using the amount of the decay to say how much of the high frequencies come through and that's really going to give you the tone of your bass and then your key players in making it sound super killer are going to be things like quadrifuzz uh, saturn other multiband distortion units where you're going to put multiple points use more than one of them if you like you'll get different results with them all try all different combinations uh tape tube combinations of the both but these these are the key things and again we can use this to add some drive and distortion a little bit to certain frequencies and we can also use it as a way to um to do some eqing even though we're not using an equalizer we're going to be you know i'm pulling out a couple decibels of the of the bass here and then uh something like this some sort of not parametric but some sort of shaping eq to pull out uh that range around 300 hertz so that you can um because that's that you so you don't get this little buzz ringing guy um and then if you have something like it you can use uh something that you know is a base resonance tool or the max base but if you do use these things use them a very very lightly and then depending on the type of base you can add your uh side chain um and there's lots of different ways to do the side chain um but a side chain or you can play with the velocity of the actual notes um and the playing of the velocity of the notes and the length of the notes is going to give you lots of different types of um 
uh, uh, feels, you know. Also, again, if you move, you know, for example, going back to that Brainiac video, he does, um, he makes like uh, 140 BPM daytime kind of stuff. So when he does the, tr the three bass notes, he puts the first one all the way down and the last two, uh, the velocity down and the next two up. So, you know, there's going to get that really like gallopy feel. Um, there's all different kinds of bass lines. We can go over that kind of thing in another one. Um, but you can play with the velocity as well. Um, and then for my technique of doing with the high notes, because I'm using Trillion, which is very stable, um, is to just separate out the top half of the octave with the bottom half of the octave so that I can adjust the decay of the higher pitch notes a little bit. And then also, if you want to, you can adjust the crossover points on the multiband distortion and if you need to, an EQ. But anyways, you can deal with the higher notes separately from the lower notes. Then finally, at the end, bounce it to mono. And if you need to shift left or right to change the uh, where the starting point is, do that. Otherwise, the main key thing is to remove this area where the tail will be overlapping with the kick so you can get a nice, clean kick drum. So that's it. Um, please uh, don't hesitate to question, comment, anything you guys have um, to go into further. I um, hope this was helpful. And please let me know if there's anything you guys want me to revisit uh, or show you in the next video on baselines. Have a great day, guys. Take care.